Hey folks, Matt from Art of the Image.com. The Nikon Z6 and Z7 have created quite a stir. They've gone viral. Everybody, it seems, is talking about them. I've been super pumped about them to the lead up now. Still very pumped about them. Still very interested in a lot of the already uh, controversy that's stirring up, namely the, the card slot. And we have uh, a viewer writing in in response to the videos I'd done about the single card slot, the fact that it's a single and the fact that it's XQD. This is Tom. Tom writes in says, Nikon Z7 and Z6. This is the heading of the email. The real problem with that single memory card slot video. Hi, Matt. I think where you missed it on the XQD versus other choices is that it is not about video speed as video is not the most taxing, even at 4K. The issue is buffer size with large megapixel images and high frame rates. There is an article out there, excuse me, that covers it fairly well so rather than duplicate this information, I will just include the pointer below. He's got an article here to full exposure photography. I'll try and remember to put a link below, but it's full exposure dot photography backslash Nikon, no dual card slot. As far as the single card slot, I think most people missed the trade-off that Nikon had to do. If they made the camera bigger to accommodate two XQD slots as they would need to do for a camera that is not just for video, then everyone would have bashed them for being larger than the Sony A7 series. They chose to go small. As far as cost of XQD, I find it fascinating that folks will drop 1500 to 2000 on a lens and 3900 on a camera and then complain that the memory card is expensive. I guess my bias comes from being a storage hardware designer and always hearing about the cost of storage while it has come down dramatically in a cost per megabyte over the last decade. The XQD slot also allows Nikon to move to the next-gen CF Express memory cards with only a firmware change to the camera. This should help pricing as well since there are multiple, ven multiple vendors working CF Express while Sony has had a lock on XQD, thus the price problem. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for your, your, uh, your writing in there, Tom. Thanks for your letter. Um, I read that article. It's, it's quite interesting. And basically what it comes down to in a nutshell is, uh, as Tom had said, we're not talking about video. We're talking about the ability of the camera to clear its buffer, its internal memory, fast enough so that the camera can shoot insanely high speeds. Now, the article points out that XQD cards can shoot at speeds of 400 megabytes a second, and uh, which is actually 3,200 megabits per second. And XQD technology can actually achieve up to 1,000 megabytes uh, megabytes per second. You've got to be careful with those two uh, for future reference. So um, that's fast. Now, we do have some SD cards, as the article points out. I think Sony and a couple others, 300 megabytes a second. And that's where my contention is coming from. Do you really need that extra, like what is that, 25% speed gain or something? Um, it's not like 300 to 400. Uh, it's certainly fast enough for video. And I'm, I'm questioning really if the camera's going to lock up at a th with a 300 megabytes a second card versus it won't with a four. That seems a little far-fetched to me. A fast SD card at 300 megabytes a second seems plenty fast. Now, um, there's no doubt that it is faster. The article also goes on to make the um, comparisons uh, between the Z7 and the D500, for instance, about size and that it would have been bigger if they had to put in two slots. And um, I think there's a little fallacy in that comparison because why don't we compare it to the A7s? Because <laughs> they're not really much size difference there. And the A7s have two slots. Now, the article says we're talking about the fact that we've chosen to go XQD. So we're talking about two XQD slots would make it bigger. And that's probably valid. But again, I don't see the need for the XQD slots. The article also points out that when you shoot in redundancy mode, in other words, having the same images copied to both cards, backups, um, that they, it slows down to the slowest card slot, which on the Sonys, if, if you're not aware of, the second slot is slower than the first slot. So when you're doing it in redundancy mode like that, it slows down to the slower of the two. The whole system goes defaults to the slowest speed, not the fastest. So I guess we're back to what it comes down to. Do you need dual card slots? And the argument is here that they gave us a much faster and much more advanced technology with the single card slot. There's also, I've seen the argument made, I, don't know, I can't remember if he makes it in this article, but other people have made the argument that the XQDs are not prone to failure. I think maybe even Tom Hogan, I might be wrong on that, sorry Tom if I am, had said that he's never heard of an XQD failing. Now if that's the case, that might be a very valid reason to go single XQD slot. Um, I can't remember at the time I had a decent SD card 
fail in forever. And I think the last time I did was years and years ago and I was able to recover it all. So again, this isn't an issue for me. I still would have liked to have seen SD slots and I would have used SDXC cards. That's what I would have liked to have seen. But the argument here is that Nikon is giving us um, a high-tech, better, more high-tech solution with faster cards and, again, the faster ability to shoot. And Tom makes the point that people, he finds it fascinating they won't spend good money on a card, whereas they'll spend all this money on a camera and lenses. Well, I've seen that same argument made for uh, batteries. People say, oh, why wouldn't you buy OEM batteries? Why do you spend money on cheaper batteries that might fail? I've been using um, batteries that are non-OEM for years, and I've never had a problem with them in the camera. The only battery I've ever had fail in a camera that caused an issue was a brand new Canon 60D that when I popped the battery into it, the whole camera overheated. I don't know if that was the battery causing a problem or the camera itself just fried. That's the only battery-related issue I could ever think of for myself anyways, and I haven't heard anybody else having a battery-related issue. So to me, it's the same thing. It's, a, it's kind of a misdirect, throwing smoke on the issue. It's like, well, you need to have that because you wouldn't want to, sh- like, why? You, that's just, you're being cheap. Well, I'm not being cheap. Why do I got to waste money? If SD were a problem and I was being cheap, they wouldn't be in other cameras like the G85 or the GH5 or so many other cameras that have SD card slots. So I guess it's still an issue for me. I see Tom's point and I get that. I just disagree with it, respectfully, Tom. And... Um, the thing about the XQD slot allowing Nikon to move to next-gen CF, uh, CF Express cards, that's probably the biggest point that I like uh, or that I would uh, tend to agree with here is that I do agree with that. That's probably going to bring the pricing down. Then you have kind of a best of both worlds. However, we're not there yet. And so maybe that could have waited for a future camera. And I guess maybe they're trying to future-proof it, but in doing so, they're making it more expensive for us to put memory cards in this thing. I don't know, it's, like, that's my problem with this Sony. Like you said, Sony has a lock on it, and there's a price problem, and I, I don't see why we just couldn't have gone SD. I don't see 400 to 300 being a big difference. I don't really see it locking up the camera. Again, though, what do you guys think? Um, great letter, Tom. Thank you very much for writing in. I'm always open to debate these things. It's interesting, and I, I, I'm not saying I'm right. This is just how I feel. Tom, you may be right. It's, it's probably not even a right issue. It's the, These are differences in opinion, and some people are going to be in agreement with Tom, and they're going to buy stuff that reflects that. Other people are going to be in agreement with me, and they may not buy a Z6 because that ticks them off. Um, what do you guys think? Do you agree with Tom? Do you think the XQD slot was the right way to go? Um, do you think I shouldn't that we shouldn't be worried about the cost of the XQD card? We should just buy it? Um, what do you think about the CF Express, that expanding... Um, the realm of what they can put in there or, or the, you know, leaving it future dated in the sense of they're going to put the next gen CF, CF Express cards in when with, with a firmware update, then you'll be able to use those in the Z6 and the Z7. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. This has been a hot topic about the single memory card slot. I can tell you right now, I still wouldn't not buy a Z6 or a Z7 over that. The the biggest issue, and we're getting this in another um in another video, the biggest thing I think Nikon's done wrong to date with either of these cameras is the whole press release. I don't know why they put these cameras into the hands of the press and the media with untested firmware. Um, Like the battery's got extremely low rating, but everybody that shoots with it says it does about five times what it's rated. Like that was, I think that was a little bit rushed. I think they should have had a more um, stable, more mature firmware in there. I don't know. Maybe they were just totally rushed. Let me know what you think about that, too. Looking forward to hearing your comments on the whole thing below. Thanks for writing in, Tom. Well thought out, uh, very well um, uh, worded and whatnot on your on your email, and I appreciate it. I do because I, we can debate it all day long. I enjoy debates, and um, Tom's obviously uh, thought this out. And uh, he's a smart guy here, I can see. And thank you for the link. It was a a good read. Um, Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.